This show, I Shouldn't Be Alive, is really just so good. I've seen, I think, probably every episode. And this episode that I'm talking about today is top three for sure. Maybe not number one, but top three. And it's about this couple and they get lost in the Amazon. The Amazon rainforest in Brazil. It's one of the last great wilderness areas. For Dave Boyer and Crystal Ramsey, it's the trip of a lifetime. Can you believe it? We're actually here in the Amazon. Hey, you know when I make a promise, I keep it. It's the realization of a dream they shared two years ago when they were a couple. That sounds complicated and sticky. I would not want to be uh, lost with a former lover ever. <laughs> In the Amazon. Hey, you know when I make a promise, I keep it. It's the realization of a dream they shared two years ago when they were a couple. Crystal and I dated for about three years and really were the closest you could possibly be. In school, where I met Dave, I had a very bad time with depression. Dave thinks this trip will be good for her. I don't know, I guess people, exes can still be friends, right? But I, I would not go on a trip of a lifetime with an ex, but it sounds like, you know, this guy's admitting he still really loves, <laughs> loves this ex-girlfriend and he had promised her and he's fulfilling that promise. I just don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> but he's also nursing a secret hope that it might just reignite their romance. She was the love of my life. I still envisioned spending the rest of my life with her. Traveling is super stressful and I don't think a two month trip to a foreign country, you know, this isn't just like a cruise, like an easy vacation. This is an excursion, which I think is great that people go on, do these really awesome things. But a two month trip, I don't think that's grounds for a, a reconciliation. I think that is uh, foolishly optimistic of him. But what do I know? All lodge in the heart of the rainforest. Around it is a network of clearly marked forest trails. Dave and Crystal spend their first two days checking out the shorter ones. Then they decide they're ready to take on the longest. It's known as the White Trail and it stretches three miles deep into virgin rainforest. We left just before 10 o'clock and expected to be back in time for a lunch, late, a late lunch. They've spent two years reading up on the rainforest, but nothing prepares them for the real thing. As soon as we went in, we started to see more than we had ever seen before. We had tunnel vision. We were focused on one thing, and that was exploring and seeing the rainforest. We were oblivious to any dangers that were involved. They are so absorbed by the sights and sounds of the forest, they don't notice that they've stepped off the marked trail. Uh, so, of course, they're looking around, you know, there's probably tons of cool animals and beautiful plants and they're not keeping their eyes on the trail, which is dangerous. I was really worried. Let's see the map. I think I forgot the map at the lodge. I had left the map sitting on the dresser in our cabin. You may be surprised by my reaction to this, like, I'm not going to bag too much on this guy. He lost the map. It happens. I have forgotten things in my life. So you know what? We'll let this one go. Mistakes happen. That being said, you are in a totally foreign location and you're in the jungle. The map Dave left behind was a hand-drawn sketch of the area. He clearly remembers it showing the lodge at the bottom, which would normally indicate that it lies to their south. But the map isn't laid out in the usual way. To get back to the lodge, they actually need to head north. If we head south, that should take us back. You're sure? <laughs> Two hours later, they're getting worried. This way. There's not much daylight left. It will soon be nightfall. I'm not going to stay out in the forest. I can't let this happen. We have to find our way back before it gets dark. As darkness descends, any chance of finding the lodge today disappears. I should be back by now. If we'd been walking in the right direction for this long, we would have I walked. know. 
you know. I don't think he wanted to deal with it. He didn't want to deal with even having to think about sleeping out there. Crystal, you know what I'm thinking? We're going to have to spend the night here. Yeah. We just picked a spot to stay, a cleared area. And we just sat down to wait out the night. I'm going to say that nothing good happens at night. As soon as that sun goes down, it's like the purge in my mind. It's da Everything's dangerous, twice as dangerous as it would have been with uh, the daylight. And driving in the dark, that's like three times as dangerous uh, to me. The Amazon at night is a terrifying place to be. Dave and Crystal are totally defenseless with no way to protect themselves from predators. We wanted to stay up, and that way, if something stumbled upon us, we would be ready. 49 bottles of beer. Take one. Chris, there's something out there. Do you think it could be a jaguar? I think if I saw a jaguar in nature, in the wild, my heart would simply stop. Woo! I, I wouldn't even believe that it's real because that's how far removed I am from the likelihood of me ever running into a jaguar. More likely, I would get run over by a jaguar. The Amazonian jaguar stalks its prey under the cover of darkness. It can kill with a single crushing bite to the head. Oh, I bet it can. A magnificent animal. Truly, it would be an honor to uh, be eaten by a jaguar. Okay, maybe that's not fair, but... um. What a way to go. Whatever it was, Dave has scared it off for now. Dave and Crystal have survived the night unscathed, almost. I'm covered in mosquito bites. Be grateful that's all that bit you. <laughs> Very funny. I really believed that we were close and we were heading in the right direction. We just had run out of time the night before. It was going to be a breeze. But with every step, they continue to move further away from the safety of the lodge. Oh my god, bro. You've been walking in one direction for hours and hours, and you had only been walking for a couple hours before you got lost. So if you were going the right way, you would have already been back. I'm not sure where this comes, where it comes from the idea to commit to this direction. It seems a lot more likely that you just went the wrong way. And that's okay, it happens. But to continue going that way? Mm. Dave, I'm out of water. I'm sorry, but this is funny. The actress's delivery of this line is funny. It's kind of, you know, Dave, I'm out of water. You better do something stat. When I realized that we were out of water and it was hot and it was 10 o'clock, I really started to realize things weren't just gonna be okay. I didn't know what to do. Should we drink water and possibly get very sick? or risk getting very sick from dehydration. I have an idea. Give me that. My plan was to use my sports bra as a filter. Okay. Okay, smart, smart. I will say, they're using the bra as a filter, genius level. Um, but I personally would never go braless in the Amazon. I just could not. If you are smaller chested, perhaps, then yes, go for it. Uh, but I couldn't do it. We would have to use some other type of fabric. It would not be my bra. We were both worried about drinking water, but in the end, when it's 95 degrees and you're sweating like that, it's gonna be more painful not to drink it. By mid-afternoon, Dave is resorting to a new desperate tactic in his search for the lodge. I was trying to keep us in the same area of where we got lost and kind of zigzagging back and forth, hoping to stumble upon the trail. Let's, let's try over there. Crystal was starting to get a little bit frustrated with, with that strategy. Dave was literally almost walking in circles and didn't realize that that's what he was doing. 
Crystal is starting to feel the pressure. She is speaking truths. I think Rachel should take the wheel. Now which way are we going? East. East? 20 minutes ago we were going south. Yeah, well we've got to try all directions. Dave, this is crazy. I can't stand to listen to you talk about directions you know nothing about. You don't know where we're going and all we're doing is walking around in circles. Dave had kept coming up with a different strategy every few hours whenever one didn't work. And that wasn't working for me. Well, what do you think? I thought we needed to come up with a strategy and continue using it until the end. That way. Okay. What neither of them realize is the only direction that can help them is north. We chose southeast. We will walk in this one direction for as long as it takes. If it takes us 40 days to get out of here, we're going to walk southeast. Hours later, and the jungle is just getting denser. Why is no one looking for us? In fact, people are looking for them. But the search is focused around the white trail. And that's now a very distant and dense seven miles away. The next day, they're still heading in the wrong direction, getting even further away from the area where rescuers are searching for them. Jaguar? No, there's more than one. They've stumbled on a pack of wild Amazonian pigs. Dave knows how ferocious they can be. The locals have said that they're really the most dangerous thing to encounter in the, in the forest other than a snake. They're aggressive. If wild boars got a hold of you, it'd probably knock you to the ground quickly, and then you'd have several animals on top of you biting and really just eating and going, going to work. Remember the wild pigs in Willow? That's what I'm imagining. And those wild pigs scared me. Scared me and scarred me as a kid. I would not want to face some wild pigs. No. They sound like they should have gone extinct a long time ago. And the fact that they're not extinct, you know, means that they've probably adapted to be really tough and really, really intense. And no, no, I don't want to face those. Wild pigs? Uh-uh. It was drawing us closer together. She told me that if I was as I was while we were lost, if we had always had that relationship in that past year, that we would still be together. She saw all the things that she had fallen in love with in the first place. Girl, don't give him false hope. Sometimes we say silly things in extreme situations. I think that's what that was. It looks good. We were trying to get our minds off of what we were going through, and we got even closer. My feelings had not changed since the day I met her. I was still in love with her. I still wanted her to be in my life and, and with me forever. And you know what? Comfort is comfort. I'm not gonna hold that against anybody. Mosquitoes. Thousands of them. The worst of it was the sounds. It's just this loud buzzing throughout the night. You feel like they're everywhere. And I knew that eventually I'm going to have to have sleep. I can't go multiple days without sleep. It's going to drive me insane. In a bid to escape the mosquito onslaught, they come up with a bizarre plan. Are they going to set themselves on fire? I don't know why my mind went there. I'm just imagining being driven mad by these mosquitoes and... A flame would keep those mosquitoes away. Crystal said, well, we should cover our bodies in mud. That would work well of keeping the mosquitoes off of us. We got inside the hole and pushed the mud in on top of each other, covered our faces, and we laid there in the mud and tried to be as still as possible. It actually felt pretty comforting laying there and I felt like I was completely covered. I felt like I was going to be safe from the mosquitoes. I thought it was going to be a great night. 
but Dave couldn't be more wrong. A massive tropical thunderstorm is building in the skies above them. Within a few minutes, we were forced out of our hole. We would have drowned there. This is the worst spa ever. For Crystal, that night was really a turning point for her, and she had gone from being whatever happens, happens. We're gonna get through this challenge to being really fearful of, of, of this being the end of her life and, and dying out there. Dave realizes that if they don't find a way out soon, Crystal's suicidal thoughts could become a reality. And the narrator has mentioned that by now she's three days off of her antidepressants. But I do want to say that having thoughts of ending your life when you're in something like this, we've seen that in other episodes. So it's not just because she deals with depression. It's not unusual, right? Like, yeah, ideally we'd all have the mindset of like, I'm going to get through this no matter what. I knew that as the days go on in her withdrawal from her medication gets worse and worse that it's going to become very difficult to keep her going and to keep that survival instinct inside her. I was so overwhelmed and so frustrated and so confused that I felt crazy. I felt like I was going to lose it. 24 hours later, Dave and Crystal's situation is bleaker than ever. They are still hopelessly lost. And as their fifth night approaches, it's Dave who's struggling. Drained by lack of sleep and the effort of keeping Crystal going, he desperately needs rest. I felt like I had lost this battle between me and the mosquitoes, between me and the night, between me and any sleep that I might get. For the first time, Dave thinks they might not make it out of the Amazon alive. That's when I started to think personally about my life. I did not have a close relationship with my family. I had never told my mother that I loved her. I had never told my family how much they meant to me. It was killing me, and I wasn't going to have that opportunity if I died out there. That thought gives Dave the resolve he needs to keep going. Um, I do think it's interesting that he's talking about regret and all his life, life regrets and how he's using that as fuel. Funny how it's not kind of, I don't know, you would imagine that it's like, I'm going to keep going for all these good things I have in my life. But I do think, I think I have that personality too, where my regrets would fuel me more. Like I didn't get to do this. I still suck at this, you know, I'm gonna keep pushing. Um, so yeah, use, use whatever you can as motivation. Anything you got today. If they aren't out of the forest by dusk, they will both kill themselves. Good, we'll do it together. Dave's resigned to dying, but there's a bizarre thought he can't get out of his head. I wanted to wash the mud that was on my arms. I wanted to wash my face and have a clean body, a clean, approach. He begins to search for water to wash himself. As we fought through some of the underbrush, when we got down there, there wasn't a creek, there wasn't a puddle. There was a flooded forest. Everywhere that we could see, there was water. It's a glimmer of hope, just enough to keep them going. He didn't wave back at us. It seemed like he was miles away. Help! We learned in one split second that we were going to live. Chills. <laughs> I was screaming and crying and just 
definitely the best moment I've ever had in my life. When we got out, we talked about, you know, all the times that we had in the jungle and how we talked about getting married, but when we were finally saved and getting better, we realized that that isn't the thing that we're gonna do at this time. She did not feel that, that way. That was not what she wanted. Um, and that was a bit of a disappointment to me. It, and that continued to be a disappointment for quite some time. Ah, oh, man. As a romantic, you know, I, I totally understand what he's saying. But, you know, sometimes things just don't work out. And that's just, it is how it is. It is what it is. They never did restart their relationship. But after their six-day death-defying ordeal, they became closer friends than ever. Uh, let's read some comments. The comments are truly probably the main motivation to watch watch these episodes and most of them are up on YouTube which is great. The Amazon is huge. How do people do these things by themselves? Makes no sense. I don't walk around an unfamiliar city without a map. Let alone a jungle. The dude wandered so far off the trail and into the friend zone. 